Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, especially guests who come from afar. Good morning and welcome to Hong Kong. Uh, I am Angela Le, Director of the Hong Kong Institute for the Humanities and Social Sciences, and one of the organizers of this uh, Inter-Asian Connections um, Conference. Um, we are very honored and very delighted to have um, Professor Roland Chin, um, our Provost and Pro Vice Chancellor, um, uh, to uh, open uh, the conference for us. Uh, Professor Chin is also Chair Professor of Eng Computer Engineering. So, Professor Chin. result of an active collaboration between three parties, uh, the National University of Singapore, the Social Science Research Council of New York, and of course Hong Kong U, uh, Hong Kong Institute for the Humanity and Social Sciences. So these three parties join together and, and make uh, this conference a uh, reality. I also uh, told by uh, Professor Angela Leung, and she explained to me what this is all about. Uh, she told me that the three parties share the same vision of reconceptualizing Asia as a region in humanities and social science studies. Reconceptualizing Asia as a region. And this conference is a flagship to share such a vision. Hmm. I'm an engineer. Uh, I have to admit that I don't know if I understand what that means. <laughs> reconceptualizing Asia as a region. I try to remember that. Um, my colleagues, some of them are here. Um, in Humanities and Social Sciences, the Dean of Faculty of Arts is here with a lot of our colleagues. Um, they always told me that I have to support whatever they like to do since they are the heart and soul of the university. I have to take the worst for it. You are the heart and the soul. I'm an engineer. So that would be on the arms and the legs of the university. That's why I'm here doing heavy lifting and running errands. Um, joking aside, uh, we're very happy to announce also that this conference is part of our centenary celebration of the university. Uh, thank you all of you for coming to our 100 years birthday party. Uh, let me take a moment to tell you a bit of our Hong Kong U history uh, since a lot of you are coming from afar. Like most universities, Hong Kong U was founded with the belief that higher education would help change and serve the society 100, year, 100 years ago. Uh, many of you may know that Hong Kong U was founded with a strong belief that its mission was not only to serve Hong Kong, but also Greater China and the region, a hundred years ago. In 1910, in the Hong Kong U Foundation Stone Ceremony, Sir Frederick Lugar, the then governor of Hong Kong said, we are here not only to afford the highest educational facilities to the citizen of Hong Kong, but to hold out the hand of friendship and to assist China to educate her sons and by leading the way in the development which is bound to take place in China. That was 100 years ago when Hong Kong U was founded. Quite a vision statement. About 80 years ago, in 1923, Dr. Sun, Sun Nesen, an alumnus of Hong Kong U Medical School, in his return visit to our Hong Kong U campus, just 100 yards from here, he said, the University of Hong Kong were the birthplace of my knowledge, unquote. About 50 years ago, in 1959, Lin Sit Rai, 
the then Vice Chancellor at that time said, you form a body of citizens capable of advising on problems of the greatest moment and may well influence the welfare of our citizens, unquote. These three quotes from 50 years ago, 80 years ago, and 100 years ago are quite meaningful to our 100 years birthday. They mention knowledge, they mention welfare of our citizen, they mention China. These are quite relevant and important as ever, especially since 21st century is the so-called China century and Asia century. The three quotes are very meaningful now in Hong Kong U. In that, Hong Kong U is research lab, knowledge, informed teaching, knowledge to help the society. Hong Kong U believes in being the service to China. Hong Kong U believes in the welfare of our citizens. And Hong Kong U believes in making an impact to the world. So the three quotes span over a hundred years. At this moment in time, become very meaningful to us. We are using this 100 year celebration not only to reflect our history, but to build on our strength and to gear up for a new century of challenges. We are embarking on a lot of initiatives and challenges to take the university to the next level and to maintain Hong Kong U to be a leading university in China, in Asia and in the world. There are many examples of initiatives. We are launching a new curriculum. We have a 2,000 bed hospital inside China that we're running in Shenzhen. We have a study center in Shanghai, etc., etc. I hope that many of you can lend your support to us and give us advice. Before I close, may I take this opportunity to thank you all again, the partner, especially SSRC and NUS, work so hard with our Hong Kong U colleagues to make this conference possible. I was told that there are many uh, renowned scholars from all the world to come, and I hope that I will be walking in and out in the next uh, day or two to learn something, uh, being a lowly engineer, to learn something uh, about the heart and the soul. Uh, I wish you a successful conference in the next few days, and uh, don't get trapped in Hong Kong U. Go out, venture out, uh, go do some shopping to help our economy. Thank you very much. <laughs>
and um, we have to select the the best, um, the most um, relevant and, and innovative proposals that would um, best prop problematize um, um, Asia as a region, you know, some satellite Asia as a region, something that Professor Chin would like to know more. Um, so, so during the process of selection, I think we have a lot of disagreement and agreement, and we have to finally we we, we decided on six workshops with two local workshops and, and, and I think the discussion process was extremely educative for me and I think all of us have learned a lot. And, and I think um, certainly Shani who uh, from the, the SSRC um, who sort of chair the selection process uh, will have more to say later on. Um, we are also particularly, I mean myself, uh, are very delighted that um, some Hong Kong local scholars are, uh, are going to participate in this workshop. Uh, some of the workshop organizers are from Hong Kong and quite a few from Hong Kong U itself. So, um, well, I personally, I, I got to know some of my colleagues a lot better uh, after uh, you know, working on, on this project. Um, uh, I, I didn't know that so-and-so work on such a topic and then and then they apply, and then I look, we look at the applications. We are so surprised to see that we have so many colleagues who work, who have similar interests. So, so it was a very rewarding and interesting process for me. And, and we hope that this project, um, this Inter-Asia Connection project, will become a long-lasting uh, platform um, for local scholars to interact uh, more directly and more actively, and also with um, scholars from other parts of Asia, America, Europe, and Australia. And, and I think we're, we're very optimistic that uh, this can be done. And uh, we are also extremely grateful that the organizers, our partners, have agreed that the uh, final uh, uh, workshop, the final uh, curriculum workshop, which will be held on Saturday, this coming Saturday, the 9th of June, um, will focus on the graduate program of the University of Hong Kong. Um, we are thrilled that uh, deans and colleagues from the faculties of social sciences and arts will come and participate in the workshop. Uh, they will join the discussion um, and we are sure that we, we will learn a lot from our overseas uh, colleagues on, um, uh, from their teaching experiences on, um, on this, uh, in this area of study. And, um, and I'm hopeful that uh, we can, um, you know, this workshop will help us rethink and we can conceptualize future strategic research themes um, in the humanities and social sciences in the university. And I think this should be the best gift we can give to the university for its 100th birthday. So all in all, um, uh, it has been a most uh, delightful experience working with our two partners. Despite difficulties we have encountered on the way, um, including financial and logistical difficulties, but since we share the same vision, I think we solved most of our problems. And for this, um, uh, on behalf of the Institute, we would like to thank um, uh, the resource will uh, uh, thank Satani Shami, Sharipa Roy, Holly Van Zansen of SSRC, and also in particular, Presenter Doara from uh, NUS for their resourcefulness and enthusiasm um, in this project. It's a great pleasure working with them. I'm particularly grateful to Helen, Helen Siu uh, of Yale University, founder and um, uh, a former honorary director of the institute and also one of the three initiators of this fascinating project and I thank her for her in innovative ideas and unfailing support uh, she's always a source of inspiration for us I of course uh, would um, I'm very grateful uh, for the senior management team of the university including Professor Chin who, who graciously accepts to open the, the, um, the conference for us. I'm grateful for uh, their guidance and valuable, valuable support for the Institute. 
Last but not least, uh, my heartfelt thanks to my wonderful staff um, who never complain about overworking. Um, very grateful, um, uh, you know, my, uh, my staff led by Joan and Joshua, and I, I'm sure you, you have all uh, email exchanges with them. And without them, this conference would not have been possible. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Satini to come up on stage and I think she will give us a, a comprehensive overview of the project. Um, <clears throat> good morning. Um, I join my colleagues and my friends uh, in welcoming you all to our conference, Inter-Asian Connections 3, Hong Kong. Uh, with this third conference in the series, uh, there was a conference in Dubai in 2008 and then the conference in Singapore in 2010. We feel that we, the partners, feel that we are well on our way to creating an important venue that enables the intersection of research agendas and the networking of researchers to develop new paradigms and new knowledge on Asian past, presence, futures and global connections. Um, as, as mentioned, um, and I, uh, as mentioned, uh, there are three main partners so far uh, collaborating and organizing uh, this series of conferences. But in this conference, we have also been joined by Yale University and specifically the Center for South Asian Studies. And Super Roy is now at Göttingen University and the Center for Modern Indian Studies at Göttingen University. And so our institutional sort of uh, partnership is growing and we look forward to it growing even further in um, the years to come. Uh, we thank uh, the donors also for this conference, the Lee Hsiang Foundation and the Chiang Ching Bo Foundation for International Scholarly Exchange, who have provided funding for this um, conference. Um, I'm also delighted to announce from now, so not to keep you in suspense, that Inter-Asian Connections 4 will be held in Istanbul, in uh, about 18 to 20 months. We don't have the exact dates yet. Um, and we will be collaborating with Kutch University, whose representatives are here with us in Hong Kong, to observe uh, the conference and its proceedings, and we welcome them to Hong Kong today as well. Um, I would like to take the opportunity this morning to give an overview of the initiative as a whole and to outline some of the main intellectuals and programmatic issues um, the opportunities and conundrums that have faced us as we have um, moved forward in this initiative. Angela mentioned the selection process, which in itself sort of encapsulates a much broader, actually, um, intellectual um, dilemmas and, and, and um, as well as opportunities in, uh, concealed perhaps by this easy title of Inter-Asian Connections. Um, before I do so, however, I've been told that uh, Vice Chancellor Chin has urgent appointments and we need to leave, but before he leaves, I, I would like to give him a small token of our appreciation of a few publications from the Social Science Research Council to perhaps expand your library on the heart and soul <laughs> type of, of disciplines. Um, I also, um, since our next, uh, next conference is in Istanbul, I. I have a small symbol of the historical and current interconnections along the Silk Road, this miniature carpet from Istanbul, but then I realized perhaps it's made in China. <laughs> um, but there is some Turkish delight here which is made in Turkey. <laughs> presented at this third conference in Hong Kong, we continue to explore new dimensions of the varied connections and continuums that crisscross the Asian expanse, linking its many parts with one another and with the globe. 
We thank the workshop directors uh, for their hard work in conceptualizing their themes and helping us attract a wide variety of excellent paper contributions. As Angela mentioned, four of these workshops were chosen competitively from a broad pool of applicants, whereas two of them were selected, the themes were selected by our local um, partners uh, as themes that particularly engage um, Hong Kong um, uh, scholars. However, the paper uh, presenters were chosen competitively for all six workshops. I'm mentioning this detail, which actually all of you are aware of since you were part of it, uh, partly to say um, that the way we've sought to organize these conferences has combined sort of open calls so as to attract uh, as wide uh, as possible a range of scholars in as many locations as possible from as many disciplinary backgrounds and, and working in as many sort of themes as possible um, because our aim is to expand the network to get to know who is working where on what. At the same time, um, in order to um, not simply have an open conference with short papers delivered in you know, multiple panels, in order to have the intensive workshop discussion, um, we take this extra step of then um, uh, organizing the papers within workshops. So we hope that this format, and we've adjusted the format across, you know, along the way a little bit, we hope this format both combines sort of the best of small intensive workshop meetings and the larger um, interaction with a broader group of um, scholars. Um, so the open the, the workshops that were chosen through the open call for proposals include um, address the following issues the direct and indirect impact of imperialisms during the long 19th century, that's the Asian Crossings um, workshop, structural inequalities and social justice, that's the Just Society at Last workshop, the role of religious learning in structuring transnational connections, that's the networks of religious learning, and the changing geopolitical alliances and relations in the wake of the Cold War, that's the shifting geopolitical ecologies. The two workshop themes that were chosen by the host institution, the first is Anatomies of Knowledge, which is organized around themes of biosecurity, risk, and new and experimental sciences and technologies. And the second, Sustainability and Citizenship in Asian Cities, which explores um, the rapid urban growth in Asia with a focus on infrastructure and rights and claims making. Um, so quite a wide range of themes, um, um, and we look forward to, to um, the discussions and the results of these workshops. As you know from the program, the workshop directors in the first plenary of the third day, uh, the workshop directors will present uh, a short uh, 20 minutes or so presentation on the, on the workshop itself, on sort of the basic themes, animating the workshop, the discussions and the papers and interventions that took place in the workshop and some ideas for future research agendas and, and ways forward. This gives everyone then a chance to at least catch, a, you know, have a little glimpse of what went on in the other workshops. But of course, we encourage you to interact with each other during the meals and breaks and so on. Although our experience so far, at least in Dubai, was that the workshops bonded so strongly that they always sat together at meals and on the buses and, and refused to talk to anyone else and even took photographs only of their workshop. Um, in Singapore, I think it was a little bit more flowing uh, between workshops. So we see these are the mysteries of organizing where you never know why things actually take on a particular dynamic. Um, actually, I would like to, at the risk of embarrassing them, ask the workshop directors to just stand up so that everyone can have one by one, one by one, one by one. <laughs> just so people have a, have a, you know, know who you are and can come up to you and, and, and talk to you about your workshop. So let's just start with the networks of religious learning. This Christophe Jaffrelo from Sciences Po in Paris and Miriam Kuntler from Princeton University. Okay, Asian Crossings is Russ Corman from University of Warwick and Julia Kern from the University of Hong Kong. Okay, um, Just Society at Last is Sayed Muhammad Khairuddin and Junaid from NUS and Morgan Liu from Ohio State University. 
who are actually just meeting, we met yesterday for the first time. They organized this conference without actually knowing each other. Um, so we're very interested in how that collaboration works <laughs> out. Um, Anatomies of Knowledge is uh, Angela Nyang and um, Izumi Nakayama from Hong Kong University, University of Hong Kong. Sustainability and Citizenship is, uh, has three directors and Radimata from New York University, um, Shibi Shivarama Krishnan from Yale University, and Billy So from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Yes, that's because the slide is okay. And then we have um, the shifting ge geopolitical ecologies, which is Chala Heda from Binghamton University and Boazichi University, and Ravi Palat from Binghamton University. Okay, so let's see. Okay. Um, all right. Um, let me start as one often does with the map and uh, make the point that the Inter-Asia Initiative would like to be responsible for dragging the shaded area um, all the way from East Asia to Istanbul and West Asia and to bring in Russia and Central Asia and the Russian um, Far East into concepts of Asia. So if uh, Professor Shin Chin was here, this is part of the reimagining of, of the Asian region. However, um, the point of this is not simply to build a bigger um, and more uh, monolithic Asia. And this is why the focus has been on the hyphen and has been on interconnections rather than on Asia as uh, a, a, an entity. And uh, this is an expanse which has been particularly sundered by geopolitics, by global economic and political alignments, and equally important for our purposes, by the politics of scholarly expertise. And by this, I mean both sort of regional expertise and the formation of scholarly communities around sub-regions, often with quite um, divisive walls between the study of one region and another. But I also mean disciplinary approaches, certain disciplinary approaches that are not context sensitive and do not encourage contextual knowledge. Um, both these the sort of um, both these uh, scholarly sort of approaches have not helped in understanding connections and crossings and linkages across this geography. Um, uh, those of you who have heard me speak before will excuse me as I repeat some, some things that I have said in every one of the conferences so far, but every time I repeat them, I, them, I myself um, learn more about them or understand them better and I think there is some value to repetition. Um, we are interested in studying and theorizing in this geographical expanse contexts and connections. We want to study contexts without turning them into containers or silos of knowledge, and we want to understand connections without disembodying them from the sites through which they, um, they work. And we want to privilege in our conference how context and connections continually reconfigure one another. More specifically, we are interested also in um, re-regionalization. This is an awkward term and you know, we're in search of a better one. But we mean by that the way in which um, regions and geographies are shifting with the emergence of new relationships, alliances, and forces. At the same time, while regions and geographies are changing, there are always projects of reimagining these geographies as entities. Um, and it is this, these sorts of dynamics that we try to understand through the use of the hyphen and through the notion of inter-Asia. So as you can imagine, some topics like migration or media flows lend themselves to this sort of analysis, whereas other topics seem to be imprisoned by nation-state perhaps, but contained by nation-state frames or by regional sub-regional frames. We would like to, um, we would like to um, look at a whole range of topics and as you see from our selection of workshops, we, we, we have had, we have had of course workshops on issues like migration or issues that seem to be about connections naturally. 
but we also have topics which do not necessarily naturally lend themselves to the notion of connections. I had mentioned in my opening talk in the first conference in Dubai that whereas many scholars applying to that first conference seem to have difficulty in stretching their analytical and empirical lens beyond their comfort zones of familiar and naturalized geographies, that when we approached officials and sponsors in Dubai for the conference, they immediately recognized the economic, political, and cultural logic of the term inter-Asian uh, connections. So sometimes the engineers get it more quickly than um, the social scientists and humanists. Um, and they quickly understood the brokerage role played by Dubai and by many of the Gulf states in mediating many of these connections, not least in higher education, for example, as we're seeing in the last 10 years. The Prime Minister of um, the United Arab Emirates addressed the plenary session of the conference, and he said, I'm paraphrasing, um, he said, my father felt most at home in Bombay and Kolkata. I myself looked to Cairo and Beirut. My son is studying in the US, but I would be sending him to Singapore for a few years after he graduates. And for me, this really sort of embodies kind of the essence of what we're trying to do. It's this, the way the gaze shifts from east to west to north to south, by generation in this case, and the example is one of generations, but by many other factors, and to the where people look for interreferencing, you know, a term that has become widely used now, or um, where they feel belonging as well. So he was not just talking about models of development or economic relations, he was talking about belonging as well. In Singapore, one of our conference speakers said, our university graduates know that to get a job, they have to be globally competitive right here in Singapore. They don't have to go, they don't have, it's, it's not only if they go somewhere that they have to be globally competitive, they have to be globally competitive in Singapore. And again, this captures sort of the sorts of um, dynamics that we are trying to study. Um, so what is often grasped intuitively by various agents of governance and economy may sit uneasily in scholarly frameworks and analytical traditions. Furthermore, the empirical imperatives are often challenging, if not daunting, especially for younger scholars faced with limited resources and uh, for international training and research, and especially for language training. Those of us engaged in research programming know well that intellectual progress and paradigm shifts do not happen simply through a good supply of smart people. There's a notion, especially in elite universities in the US, that if you just get smart people and a good library, that somehow, you know, there'd be this flourishing of knowledge. And flourishing of knowledge does happen, but it doesn't necessarily lead to new intellectual directions and paradigm shifts. For that, you need appropriate infrastructures, you need judicious um, distribution of resources and opportunities. Knowledge production is like any other production. It needs that infrastructure in order to promote and push um, in particular directions. And this is at our most ambitious what we're trying to do with very limited resources, I should say. Um, uh, I'll talk more about that, I won't. <laughs> um, we need to go beyond the series of conferences. This is where I'm leading to. We need to go beyond the series of conferences, and we need to go to such modalities as summer institutes and training workshops and, and supporting research directly, research grants for junior scholars, for senior scholars. Um, so that the conferences eventually become a venue for linked and um, targeted research projects. So one part of it could always be an open call for papers, but another part could reflect research that's coming out of um, particular working groups that have been set up. Um, we need to think about how theoretical framings and empirical findings can be translated into curriculum and training for a new generation of inter-Asians, and Angela referred to the curriculum meeting that we will have on the day after um, the conference ends. And we need to rethink disciplinary boundaries in ways that transcend arguments um, that are not helpful about universalistic versus particularistic or um, theory versus place or you know, um, anthropology versus political science or those sorts of arguments really don't help us further um, this kind of agenda. 
So I would say we need to provincialize disciplines and expose their bias towards theorizing from the West. We need to shift academic values towards valorizing and rewarding collaborative research and transnational networks. Decentering and recentering knowledge production is at the heart then of this initiative. We are working slowly and incrementally and continue to seek funding for this vision. SSRC is not actually a foundation, as, as many of you know. We fundraise for all our activities. Our partners have been fundraising for all of these activities. Um, we have made some gains recently. We are delighted that we SSRC is now offering a postdoc fellowship program called Inter-Asian Context and Connections. Due to our donors' um, restrictions, the Mellon Foundation, this is unfortunately open only to scholars affiliated with US institutions. It's not restricted by nationality, but it's restricted by institutional affiliation. We hope, though, this might attract further funding internationally, and then we can have it as an open international um, competition. Um, themes uh, across the three uh, work uh, conferences, we've been seeing certain themes coming up. Again, issues of religious networks um, and circulations of, uh, around religious networks. Old histories, new geographies has been a term that we have used. Migration, circulation, security, insecurity. Globalizing Asia with a focus on cities and diasporas knowledge hubs, knowledge networks, and the notions of Asia, which have been less developed in our, in our conferences. Um, this is the first one is Dubai, the second one is Singapore. Um, we are also trying uh, to the extent possible while keeping the workshop, the conferences open to new participants. Participants are also circulating through the workshops now, and we're very happy about this. So we have with us today, for example, people who were workshop directors in Dubai, workshop participants in Singapore, and auditors today. So we have a plenary speaker from Dubai who was then a workshop director in Singapore and is a plenary speaker um, in Hong Kong. So we're trying to keep a balance between keeping it open but building a community and building a network at the same time. And I, and I want to come back to this um, in, in a minute. Um, so the other thread running through this project is that of building research collaborations between scholars in different locations and enabling the creation of transnational and transregional scholarly um, communities. So. Um, this is now from the perspective of the SSRC and each of our partners I'm sure has their own sort of history of how um, this project fits into their um, institutional priorities. But I wanted to just um, quickly point out that this initiative comes out from precursors at the SSRC, including the regional programs, and including collaborative research programs that we've organized over time, as well as the SSRC emphasis on international collaboration. At the moment, the current activities include the conferences, uh, postdoctoral fellowships, and the curriculum um, planning, um, which are at the moment just one day meetings, one we had at, at NUS in 2010 and one we're having at uh, here after this conference in 2012. Our aims would be to create new modalities and activities such as uh, transregional virtual research institutes, which we don't know what it means, but it sounds right. It sounds like what we're trying to do. <laughs> how you would do it. Just imagine a university research institute, but virtual and transregional. And somehow we'd have to find the ways in which to, to organize that. Collaborative research grants is, is an aim. Curriculum development workshops, where we would actually have a theme and have people from different universities coming together to develop new curriculum, summer institutes, and then an electronic platform and a website. Our website at the moment does have the proceedings of the conferences. It's, it, for Dubai, it has a, it's quite a comprehensive report, actually, with all the director's reports and, and analysis of the themes that emerge um, from that conference. We're also doing, um, we're also looking now at the pool of applicants who applied to the three conferences, as well as now we have the postdoc applicants. 
and looking at that as sort of a community. Uh, of course, we can't judge exactly who responded to our polls and, and who it represents and so on, but it's very interesting to look at the disciplines, to look at, um, I know this is not very clear, but this is also on our website, <laughs> um, uh, of, of the disciplines from which we're receiving applications, um, the regions from which we're receiving applications, the regions in which the, or, the, or the locations in which the researchers are located, um, but also the regions they work on. And sort of interesting findings are, are, are coming out of that. Um, some of it sort of, um, um, you know, as you might imagine, heavy emphasis on the humanities, especially on history, less engagement by social scientists, uh, for example. Particular regions producing more, you know, we get more applications from certain regions than from others. And this is the sort of thing that we want to, we want to look at the people involved in our initiative as kind of the community that we're trying to understand and understand where the needs might be and where the networking would be most effective and so on. Um, so we have about a thousand scholars who have applied over, over these years and, and so that's a very interesting sort of tool to, to begin to think about. We also distributed a, a questionnaire um, to all those who participated in, in the Dubai conference and the Singapore conference. Um, and we're trying to sort of look at impact. Now, as always, the response rate was a bit low. So we only got um, 31 from um, the Dubai participants and 20 from um, the Singapore participants. But even with, and perhaps, you know, we get more in and, and we were sending it around again, the questionnaire, but we were trying to look at um, has the conference had an impact in terms of networking and collaboration, including the development of collaborative research projects, has it had an impact on your research interests, has it had an impact on new substantive and intellectual directions, has it made a change to the geography of your project, um, have, you know, have you introduced new case studies? Have you developed a, a different way of looking at the regions being studied? Um, we've asked about the development of research products, journal articles, edited volumes, and the implementation and adoption of any institutional changes, such as curriculum, new curriculum, course offerings, university working groups, centers, and so on. And it's, it's, it's very interesting to see, you know, we're gratified that overall sort of the the response is positive, but perhaps only those who went for a positive sent in the questionnaire, so we can't tell. Um, but it's, it's interesting how sort of um, the differences between um, Dubai and Singapore, although that may also be a function of the conference in Singapore having a less time to have sort of its impact. But so networking and collaboration in Dubai sort of um, seems to have, there seems to have been quite an impact on networking and collaboration. But in terms of um, uh, geography, the Singapore conference seems to have um, influenced people's notions of sort of the geography they were interested in yeah, even more. So that's, um, that's quite interesting. Um, we've also been collecting, you know, outputs, um, both in terms of um, in publications that have come out of um, these workshops, um, or workshops that the workshops that have led to other research projects, to working groups, to um, new networks being formed, and so on. So, I'm putting this up partly because I really hope um, when you receive this questionnaire as, uh, after this conference, after this conference has been over for a little while, we send it to you that you do fill it in because I think this is. This is the kind of feedback we really need to understand better in order to plan these activities and other activities, you know, with the aim of, of the impacts we're trying to produce. Lastly, I just um, talk a little bit about, you know, the difficulties of, of um, inter-Asian connections, the difficulties of studying this hyphen, and how different workshops across the three conferences have dealt with it. So some workshops um, or the theme of the workshop, the topic of the workshop, was the production of inter asian in itself. So we had a workshop in Dubai called Sites of Inter-Asian um, Connections. So that was the, and they looked at specific sites in which there were imaginings of Asia took place. And then, of course, these imaginings have a geography uh, to them, and, and it's interesting to look at the geography that, 
that this Asia, this notion of Asia, um, at different time periods and different places, um, the kind of geography that's um, articulated within a certain idea of Asia. Now, some workshops uh, looked at specific connections, uh, migration, trade, religious networks, with individual papers looking at different chains of connections, and then the workshop at, as a whole, kind of juxtaposing all those chains on top of one another, uh, you know, mentally kind of create this map of um, connections cutting across Asia. And then there were workshops which were more comparative in, in spirit, where each case study, each paper was perhaps a study of only one place, but then the discussion of the workshop itself was what created the inter-Asian connection, rather than the papers that were presented in the workshop. So these were different strategies for uh, looking at, at the hyphen. If I can paraphrase um, uh, the title of, uh, of this wonderful book, um, Asia as Method, and, and um, use the term Inter-Asia as Method, the book by Kwon Sing Chen, who's apparently at another conference down the road um, at the moment, <laughs> we would have loved to have him with us. If we can think of Inter-Asia as Method, um, and this is really the result of discussions we just had yesterday um, uh, with, uh, with a number of our, our partners. So looking at tangible connections and exchanges along continuous or discontinuous geographies, that's perhaps the most sort of um, um, direct and clear way of thinking about inter-Asia. Um, however, um, um, somebody made a useful comment that, um, that it's useful to look at these connections at kind of a meso level, neither at kind of the micro level of circulations in very small places, nor in the language of global, you know, the very expansive language of globalization at the macro level. Um, another sort of method we've been seeing is the in-depth study of one place, but not for comparative purposes as much as to unpack the layering of different circuits and circulations that run through this one place. And this is very hard to do. Uh, methodologically, but it's a very challenging way, a very interesting way of thinking about inter-Asia through the lens of one place. Um, a third is uh, what we've come to call convergences, um, which is how different places may respond to common forces. And so it's a comparative analysis, but it's still looking at, um, at connections because of sort of, um, um, of sort of, uh, perhaps macro structures that are structuring local um, reactions. And then th the fourth, as I mentioned, is the production of Asia as an idea or an imaginary through art, through film, through ideology, through institutions, um, trans-regional institutions, and trans-local institutions. Uh, I know I've taken a long time, but I hope, I, I really wanted to convey to you both sort of the organizational and the substantive sorts of discussions that we've been having, um, that have been framing the way that we've been organizing these conferences. Um, I, I look forward to being able to revise this thoroughly at the end of this conference, to have new ideas, new suggestions on how we might um, study the hyphen as I've been calling it. So thank you very much for your patience. Since um, we have some time before uh, the first plenary, um, you know, our speakers for the first plenary are not here yet. Uh, Margaret Ng is still at the Legislative Council. I think she's chairing a meeting and she won't be here until around 11. So uh, we have some time and, and we suggest that we take a group photo and, and you always be served coffee outside. Uh, you, you will have coffee, you will have a coffee break. Uh, while waiting for our two speakers uh, for the first plenary. Um, everybody is welcome to, uh, to take part in the group photos. Just 